We will start the Creo Primer by creating a corner block and then follow that with the strut. So we'll start a new part, but make sure you select the working directory first of all. In my case, it's uh, on one of the local drives. So we'll click on new part and we can give it a name, let's say cube. Press OK. The first thing you may need to do is go to File, Prepare, Model Properties, and make sure the units are changed to millimeter newton seconds. Click Set, Interpret Dimensions, OK, and Close. You can also assign a material. In this case, we can just make them out of nylon. Press OK and press Close. So now we are ready to edit our part. Uh, we can start with an extrude operation. Uh, we can first of all enable all the plane views. So these are our dotted planes and we can start sketching a rectangle on the front plane and then extrude it. So we can start the extrude tool, click on um, rectangle, we can choose a center rectangle and we pick the center of the bottom plane and create a, a, an arbitrary rectangle. We can add dimensions to it, so if you click on References, you can see that the dimensions are arbitrarily 200 something to 120 something. So we wanted this to be 30 millimeters and also this to be um, 30, the same. We can either enter them each or we can also put a constraint saying that this horizontal line is the same length as the vertical line. And we can continue, press OK, and that gives me a, a prism 56 millimeters long by default. And we can change the dimensions of that as well. If you notice on the left here on the dashboard, you can make this a symmetric extrusion so that it extrudes the same distance on both sides of the sketch plane. So we can select that and we can change the dimensions to 30 millimeters, 30 and enter. So that orange indicates that um, it's, a, it's a preview. So when I click on OK, that's changed to a gray color and control D so that I can See the default view. So that's the first part of this um, block finished. And we need to add the holes and put runs around the corners of these cube and put chamfers on the edges of the holes. Okay, we'll start adding the front face hole. So we'll extrude on this face and created the datum plane on that face, centered on the uh, center of the face. So we'll start with a circle, which is a center and point. Point to the center of the datum plane and create a circle. And then we can create a, a dimension for it. We want that to be eight millimeters diameter. And that's the sketch completed. By default, it extrudes to add material. We can ask it to remove material and also change the direction. So it's not going all the way through the length of the cube at the moment. So we can change that to on the dashboard to this option which extrudes to intersect with all surfaces. So if you look at it now, uh, the extrusion is going through the other side. We press OK to accept this. 
Now we can place another extrusion on this face. Okay, we start our circle and it doesn't snap in the center of this cube face. So what we can do is create a reference on the fly. So press the Alt key and when the front bottom plane is highlighted, click left mouse button and that should add a reference line there. So now we can snap to the center of the cube and then draw a circle and we can add a dimension to that. So we'll change that to eight millimeters and that completes the sketch and we can extrude and we want that to remove material and also change direction and extrude all the um, length of the cube. So that shows that it's what I intended in my design. So press OK to accept that. And we also wanted to create another hole at the top. And this time on the primer, we do this by creating an engineered feature, a hole, which is in here. So we want to place it at the top face. And by clicking the white rectangles or squares, we can place it on anywhere on the face. Uh, but we want to create it centrally. So if you can use these uh, green squares to create references. So we can create a reference to the right datum plane and also to the front datum plane. So you can see that uh, it's put some dimensions to these uh, datum planes uh, from the center of this hole. Um, we can change these dimensions and place it where we want. But if you look at the dashboard, there's an option for a placement. And we open that and we can change the offset reference. Instead of offset, we can make it align. So now the, the center of the hole is aligned with the um, center of the face of this cube. You can click on placement and that closes that. And we also want that hole to go through all the length of this cube. So click on um, this button on the toolbar and the dashboard, which drills to intersect with all surfaces. And press OK to accept it. Which looks OK, but I didn't add the actual dimension there. So I can always go back right click on the whole feature and click on edit definition and I can change that diameter to um, 8 millimeters and press OK so the whole system is regenerated and as we are building these first features you'll find that on the left you have the extrude 1, extrude 2, extrude 3 operations and the whole operation and now we'll add the round features on the edges of the um, cube. So we can do that on the uh, ribbon and find the round tool. Um, we can first select the edges. So that's all the 12 edges selected and we can click on round and we can change the dimension, let's say four millimeters, press OK and that looks OK to me and press to accept it. So you can see that all the edges are rounded, except that I forgot this one. So I can go back to the round feature and do edit definition and I can add to the selection um, this corner as well. Press OK. So that looks complete to me. Next feature is to add the chamfers around the edges of the hole. And we can do that with the, the chamfer uh, button on the ribbon. Um, so you can select 
these edges and press control to select more than one you can click on chamfer four millimeters is a bit too much so let's change that to half a millimeter that looks good and I can also continue adding more on the other side um, so that's all the six holes uh, six faces completed we can select none of these uh, planes or coordinate systems etc and that gives us another cleaner view and you can zoom in and out and see um, the part from all directions and control D will bring it to the default orientation so we can also put some color to this we can change that under render and then appearance gallery and we can make it green if you want and um, we can click on cube because if you notice on the right corner it's got a select um, dialog box open so we can select the whole cube and press ok and that paints the whole cube to green we can go back to model so that completes the cube part before we create the strut part make sure your model is saved so go to file save and press ok and we'll create a new part and call it let's say strut one press ok and we'll start by extruding um, on the say right datum plane but before we do that let's go and check if the dimensions are what we want by default it's inches pound seconds let's change that to millimeter newton second set and OK and close that we can also change the material we can change that to again nylon press OK and then close so to sketch I selected the right datum plane and do an extrude and I want to create a circle on this and starting from the center um, I can put a reference on that I just want it to be 8 millimeters so that it can fit the cubes and that's the sketch done we can extrude it um, we can extrude it symmetrically again and also change the length and I want to use 90 millimeters length press OK and control D to fit and that looks OK press OK to see the whole extrusion now I want to create another extrusion on the same right plane extrude circle this time I want it to be 12 meter in diameter so change that to 12 press OK and I want it to go symmetrically from this um, center of this bottom plane and the length I can change that to um, 70 press OK if you press Ctrl D you can see the whole strut which looks fine now what we want to do was to make it lighter create an arc so we can revolve it and remove some material from the center of the strut so to do that um, I can select the front datum plane which is that one so you can go to sketch and if you click on this button 
it allows you to view the sketch from the front. And I wanted to create an arc there, which I will revolve. So I can go to arc, and the one I want is center and end. So let's click on this location as a reference for the center. And see, I can't uh, hit a, a point here exactly on the um, edge of this slender so i can create a reference line there on the fly so press alt key and click on that location when i remove the um, alt key i can see that it can now um, find a snap location so click that and click that and Clicking the middle mouse button so finishes this uh, arc, but still I can edit the arc. I can uh, move it so that the bottom point of the arc is somehow um, above the, the center line of the cylinder. So I want to put a dimension to the distance between that bottom point and the center of the axis of this cylinder. So I can put a normal reference there, dimension there. So click on the arc, click on the um, line reference, and then click the middle mouse button somewhere here. So that creates a dimension there. And I wanted that dimension to be about four millimeters. And I also wanted to dimension the distance from that point to that point, and I'm seeing the normal is still highlighted, I can click that point, left click to select, and left click to select that, and the middle boss button somewhere here, and that creates another reference point for me. So put 60 there. So that's my sketch completed. And on the left, on the tree, you can see that the sketch is there, and I wanted to revolve that to remove material from the cylinder. So I can, while the sketch is highlighted, I can click on the revolve button and that starts the revolve tool. And if you um, look at the status window, it asks me to select a straight curve or edge axis or axis of coordinate system to specify axis of revolution. So I can click that, for example, which gives me the axis I want. I can also create a 3D view that allows me to see the axis more clearly. So that's the axis I want. And it creates 360 degree revolution by default. First of all, make sure that revolve as solid is highlighted. And then I can ask it to remove material. So it's going 306 degrees, removing that arc of material from the cylinder. And press OK to accept that. And the next part is to add some rounds and chamfers. So I want to create um, a round on the edges of these two uh, cylinders. So click on round, um, half a millimeter. Let's say that's OK. And I also wanted to create uh, chamfers on the edges of the cylinder. So I can select these two edges and create chamfer. Again, half a millimeter. That's OK. That's the geometry of this strut completed. I can go to uh, give it a color, render, appearance gallery. Let's give it a yellow color. Um, and then it asks me to select one or more items again. So I can select the whole start part and press OK. And that completes the start for this um, primer. The next step on the primer is to create an assembly. So we can go to New, 
and assembly and give it a name like kit toy and press OK. And the first part can be brought into the assembly. Let's say the Q part open. So it's got a purple color as it is um, brought in to the assembly. And we need to make sure it's aligned with uh, all the atoms and um, get a, all the constraints specified. By default, the automatic is activated. But say, since this is the first part, we can put it in a default position. So once we do that, it turns into an orange color and that it means it's fully constrained. So we can click OK. And then we can bring in our strut. So assemble again, and strut, open. And again, it's got a purple color and we need to align this with the hole. See, selecting this face and also selecting this face. So they are aligned. And we can also make this face coincident with that face. So it again turns into an orange color. And press OK. So that's the two parts assembled and we need to continue until we assemble all the parts together. Assemble another strut and we can drag the part in anywhere we want. Um, we can make this coincident with this face again. We can get them close to each other and then highlight this face and this face again turns into an orange color and that's where you want it that's good and let's put the next strut in assemble another strut so we can drag it to somewhere close to where you want and we want it to align this slender face is this slender face and if the parts are far apart when I want to make them coincident um, the automatic constraint may not actually bring the faces together but may give um, a distance or distance um, constraint so you can always go back and change it uh, from that. Instead of a distance, what you want is a coincident uh, constraint. So we can continue, add another cube. And this time I want to put it here, let's say. Assemble, cube, open. And we can drag it to where we want it to be close to. Select. Um, this face and then make it coincident with that and we can drag it if you want let's see if um, see co coincident is highlighted but we can make it automatic or coincident is highlighted so we can select that one and that one so that makes them coincident press ok so we can continue like this until we bring all the corners on the cube and all the eight struts to complete the assembly. Once the assembly is completed, um, it would be nice to create a render of this. So we can go to the scene and choose an environment like um, this kit assembly scene or um, photo Photolog Studio Hard, we can click that one and we can choose the room, um, the sizes, the locations of the ceilings, the floor. Um, for example, we can bring the floor higher or lower. 
um, and we can change the location of the walls etc and we can then simply click render window and this will create a render of this object in the um, particular room environment with any lighting and other effects. Depending on the quality settings, this might take a few minutes. So in this case, I have chosen a draft option. Um, you can go to render setup and choose a high or a maximum quality option and it'll take um, larger and larger amount of time. Once you have created the render, um, you can save the output um, to a, a JPEG file, or as well as that, you can do an output here and then save it into a JPEG here and direct it there also giving a size for the image you wanted. The next activity in this primer is to create a drawing and we can choose new drawing and call it cube drawing. Um, we can do that, say empty with format and use the format that uh, we have uploaded on the university website. So we can use the um, A4 landscape. Open that one, press OK. And that creates our uh, title block as well as some references on the edges of the drawing. And we can bring in our general drawing. So we want to create um, our corner block, for example, drawing. So we open that and press OK. And it's asking the center point for this. So I click here um, and it's showing me a default um, orientation from the part and I want to change that. I can change that by going to view display and choosing the hidden line format and I can also change the tangent edges display style to none and press apply. So that looks okay to me but I want to look at it from a different angle. So if you go to view type and we can choose front and press apply. So that's my first view and it's a general view and I can create projections from that. So let's close this one. And at the moment, the drawing is locked. So if I unclick that, I can actually change the location of that. And by default, again, the scale is one to one. And I can change the scale of that as well. So in order to create a projection from this general view, I can click projection and this gives me the center point and and this time I want to choose another projection and this one to the right and if you notice it's created the top view and the right view and again I want to go and change the um, if you double click that I can change the um, style of these drawings. Um, so view display, I can change that to go and do hidden with no tangent edges and press apply. And also the same for this view. Uh, if I double click view display, I can change that to hidden and none for the tangents apply and that looks okay so we can close the next thing I can do is um, put in another um, 
general view um, press OK and then click that and that's my 3D uh, shaded model so that looks OK to me and I can change the locations of these anywhere I want on this A4 drawing so if I wanted to change the scale for example and make it um, 2 to 1 I can do that here press value as 2 and press enter it now looks a bit crowded so um, can I need to change the locations of these so it looks nicer and um, what you also need to do is add drawing annotations on this like the dimensions so if you click on annotate and show model annotations so when this view was highlighted it shows which drawing dimensions are available to show and I can say okay show this one and this one on this view and um, press OK and I can select this one and show model annotations and this time um, I can select say to show this one and this one and this one on this view so as I click on these uh, they change color to blue press OK and click on the background and if I click on this I can change the size or locations of these drawings so on the right view I can change uh, show model annotations and I can ask it to sort of show these dimensions and press apply and we can always go back and change um, the locations of these so if I click on this dimension for example I can change its location to show somewhere here as long as it is clear and visible that's good so that looks okay to me um, we can add other annotations like um, drawn by title class etc um, before we do that let's save this drawing press ok and we also wanted to create another annotation and that would be a simple mode for example and we can um, create a node by clicking make node here and it allows me to um, start a node at this point so the node is let's say this is done by a student press ok and you can see that a student is shown here and I can do done return um, if I need to edit this again I can double click it and then edit the node properties edit the text I can also change the text color so if you go to text style you can go and change that to a black so press ok press ok it is possible to make a more advanced uh, drawing template so these po fields can be populated automatically by making uh, parameters in the model but in this case it's a simple way of entering uh, the data just by yourself using annotations